Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Um, my name is Karthik Ramakrishnan, and I work with Symantec as a senior systems engineer. Um, I've been in the cybersecurity industry for a little over 15 years, and I specialize in security incident response, incident response forensics, and those kind of domains. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about evolving incident response to cope with the digital transformation. Um, so incident response, plainly put, is an organized and managed approach to deal with the aftermath of any incident. And that incident may be related to uh, a financial industry. That incident may be related to a natural disaster. In our context, related to cybersecurity and digital transformation that makes it even more complicated. The objective, end of the day, is to be able to respond in such a manner that we are able to get back up and running and save time, save money, and be able to run our businesses as normally we would. Um, this is a tsunami alert monitoring system that is used by the seismological department in Japan. Now, Japan has been uh, a very seismologically active nation um, in the history. Um, they've been researching earthquakes for uh, almost 100 years, and the high rises in Japan are actually earthquake resistant. Um, they actually thought they knew everything that there is to know, know about earthquakes until March of 2011 when an earthquake of magnitude 9 hit them and caused so much devastation and it resulted in what we call as a tsunami that they actually had to go back to the drawing board, get down to basics and start looking at how they can do things differently and how better they can understand this phenomena. We are in a somewhat similar situation. Up until a few years ago, we thought we knew all that we had to know about cybersecurity. We knew how threats were populated, how viruses came, and so on and so forth. But things have changed. We have this tsunami of cyber attacks going on day in and day out that we also need to understand this better and be able to come up with mechanisms to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves better. And that's what we're going to do today. So. <clears throat> When we talk to a lot of our customers around incident response and the security issues that they have, what we find out is you know, they don't have a mechanism to pinpoint exactly what is going on in their environment with regards to a particular incident. They don't have the tools, they don't have the processes to collect evidence. They know there are threats, they understand there are threats in the encrypted traffic but they're not able to look into them. We see a lot of organizations have awareness about malware, but they don't have a definitive tool, a process, to be able to fingerprint how a malware comes in, what exactly it does, and so on and so forth. And also, the ability to be able to respond and recover from such an incident uh, is not very good when we talk about a lot of organizations. And then there are organizations who probably have the tools and the processes, but they do not have skilled people. Um, if, you, if you read about the top 10 cybersecurity issues, one of the issues has always been the lack of resources. There are just not enough skilled people around who can lead organizations to have a secure maturity, uh, mature security posture. And <clears throat> last but not the least, um, if they have the people, the process, and the technology, despite we see that organizations are falling behind and playing catch up in this game of uh, being attacked, being breached day in and day out. What we need to try and understand in order to build a mature security posture is the fact that this underground industry of attackers or hackers or however we may want to call them is very, very organized today. Okay, they are not just script kiddies, they are not just people 
who are doing this for fun, they're doing this with a motive. The motives are cyber espionage, the motives are to make money, the motives are for nation states to spy on each other and so on and so forth. They follow a very organized sort of a methodology um, which starts off with trying to know your target to the extent trying to know the exact individual within the target organization. And in the connected world that we live in today and with social media being so popular, we all have Facebook profiles and LinkedIn profiles and Twitter profiles and so on. It's fairly straightforward for an attacker to just go online and take a look at an individual and see what position does he or she hold in an organization? What kind of hobbies does he or she have? What are they interested in and so on? And they can accordingly you know, create a weapon uh, a file, um, a link, a phishing email, and so on and so forth that will be delivered to their target so they can click on something and get infected and that will be the start of the infection. The reason it's un important to understand this methodology is because when we start doing incident response with this methodology in mind, and I'll show you a live example towards the end of my presentation, um, we can stop the attack at various stages if we are proactive enough. Now, um, in one of the earlier presentations, it was mentioned that um, you know today's signature-based tools uh, are only 40% effective in dealing with the threats that we see, and it's 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 very true. Uh, you know the traditional threats you can stop using the whole bunch of technologies that you're using, be it the IDSs, IPSs, the firewalls, and so on and so forth. But the advanced malware actually goes through all these traditional defense mechanisms and can infect you. And then we have this whole new problem with SSL, right? Um, SSL, or encryption, or encrypted traffic, the very basis of that was to provide privacy integrity of data so that no one else can snoop into your traffic and get to know what they're doing and so on and so forth. Um, SSL adaptation is very good. Uh, it's growing year on year at a very fast pace. Well, you may ask, it's a good thing, right? Why, why, why is it a problem? It's a very good thing. Uh, uh, I read an article a couple of weeks ago which said that there are almost a million websites today that use HTTPS. It's a very good thing. We are protecting our users' privacy and uh, the data integrity and so on. But the problem is, so are the attackers. The attackers are using this channel not only to enter the organizations that they want to infiltrate, but they're also using this channel to exfiltrate confidential data and information. And on top of that, you could also have insiders using um, file sharing, file hosting websites, using webmails, which are all encrypted today in order to export off confidential information. And we'll see how we can tackle this problem as well. I want to briefly go through how incident response works today, right? So an incident happens, okay? and the security manager or the security teams are trying to collect logs from their various security devices, from the proxy, from the firewall, and so on and so forth. You will also go to the end system, which is infected, try and collect logs. Now, uh, one of the things with logs is that in a lot of modern and advanced attacks, the attacker will try and cover up their trail and they will delete all the logs of whatever they have done. And if you are in such a situation, which means you can't do any incident response, you can never get to know how the attacker came in, what data or information did they take, and are they still in, the, in your network? What was the damage that was caused? If you take a look at some of the recent big breaches, um, let's say uh, Home Depot and a few others, you've always seen them coming out with statements saying, um, oh, you know what, we lost 10 million credit card numbers and 10 million social security numbers. A week later that changes, they add a few more million. And ultimately, you know, they all say, oh, you know what, we've lost everything. The reason they say that is because 
they want to protect themselves by saying that, you know, we've lost everything because they don't have an effective way of actually figuring out how many records were accessed, how much was actually lost. And it's not like these big organizations did not have best of breed technology. They did. But without having the right incident response methodology, the right incident response tools, what you're trying to do is put together a puzzle which you can never solve. So <clears throat> as a result of this, what's happening is organizations are not getting to know that they've been infected or they've been breached for a very, very long time, for as long as six months. Um, I, I forget the name of the most recent uh, breach that happened, but the attackers had actually gotten some time around the April, May time frame. Um, I think it was one of the big consulting firms uh, that was attacked, and they only figured out three or four months later. So you see, the window of exposure is expanding. Organizations are, are not getting to know that they're being breached. And what's worse is in a lot of cases, they are being informed by external parties. So in the West, it's very common for the FBI to knock on the door of organizations and say, hey, you know what, we've seen your credentials, your IP addresses, and other information from your network floating around in the underground world. You probably want to check what's going on in your environment. And that's when organizations wake up and think, oh, you know what, I think we've been breached. And then, What's also alarming is the time to respond to these kind of incidents is way too long. Um, smaller organizations have actually had to close their shop because they can't afford, they can't afford to keep alive such investigations and recover from such calamity when it happens. It's not just about the uh, reputational damage, but it's also the amount of money that you lose or that you have to spend to recover from something like this. So, <clears throat> keeping all of this in mind, um, Gartner actually came up with a new security architecture wherein they talk about four stages of an adaptive protection architecture. What Gartner is saying, and it's very synonymous with what we are doing at Symantec and how we are trying to help our customers, is that you need to shift your mindset from incident response to continuous response, which means you need to constantly monitor your systems. Stop thinking about prevention. I'm not saying that prevention is not required. Prevention is required, but as I stated earlier, prevention does not scale alone. You're only protecting about 40% of the threats that are out there. How are we going to tackle the 60% which we have no visibility of? So you have to have a mindset of a proactive, um, let's say, a security uh, practitioner wherein you are thinking, you know what, I'm already breached and I need to keep looking for indicators of compromise and I need to keep um, making sure that I am remediating all these instances before it becomes into something really big for my organization. One of the other issues that we have is that, uh, you know, we have technologies that help us to do all these things, um, but they are in different silos, and they don't speak to each other. That creates a big problem for security teams. I have a network forensic system, I have a host forensic system, um, I have a same solution, but they don't talk to each other. Well. How, how does that make my life easier? I will have to go onto one system, collect the evidence or the indicators of compromise, and go onto the other system, and then put it in there and look. So that's a very, very cumbersome process. So one of the most important things of having a good, mature security posture is to be able to have technologies that can interoperate with each other, that can integrate with each other, making your life easy as security practitioners. <clears throat> Some of the most important questions that we need to answer in such a situation, and you know, the, uh, the board of directors and the security managers, the CIO, CISOs, will all be tasked with making sure that they have answers to these questions. You know, who did this to us? How did they do it? 
I was talking about the examples of big breaches earlier, they are never able to definitively say that these are the number of records that were accessed and these are the number of records that were actually stolen. So we need to be able to answer these questions. <clears throat> so uh, let's take a look at some of the building blocks of how you can mature the incident response capabilities. Um, a big important part of continuous response or also called as rapid detection and response, is to have the ability to capture all traffic at all times. You should be able to capture it, you should be able to replay it, you should be able to go back in history and check what happened at a certain point of time. You should be able to search the metadata that is available from the packet captures. Third party intelligence or threat intelligence is a very, very important factor uh, when it comes to protecting your assets today. Um, without threat intelligence, you know, you will end up doing a lot of manual investigations and that's obviously a l very time consuming and not the best way to do things. So threat intelligence gives you the ability to look at a lot of the known stuff, some of the unknown stuff. So basically it will create uh, an alert, an indicator for you to dig deeper into, to analyze and to investigate. And I talked about the ability to integrate with the various security tools, which is also very, very important. Last but not the least is the ability to have um, sandboxing, malware detection and analysis, um, static analysis where you can do a code review or behavioral analysis where you can actually execute the file and see what it actually does and in combination to a certain amount of anomaly detection or behavior-based detection uh, is also very, very important when we talk about having mature incident response capabilities. Um, I'm sure everybody here is aware of SANS, what SANS does, SANS is an organization which uh, um, is very active in the security field and they um, have a lot of courses and they provide a lot of guidance to organizations on security best practices as well. So according to SANS, in order to have a mature incident response posture, you should capture and record data at least worth 30 days. Um, now, storing packet captures has other nuances to it, which we will not get into right now, but if you can, it's better to store 60 days worth of data so that it gives you the ability to retrospectively analyze whatever you're capturing and be better to respond to threats. With that, I'm gonna take a look at the semantic incident response technologies and the methodology uh, and show you how we can fulfill all these requirements and help you as customers. So, <clears throat> There are a few different solutions that uh, form this uh, incident response methodology. And as I said, one of the key things is for them to integrate together and give you the ability to uh, reduce your time to respond and time to resolution. The centerpiece of our incident response technology is security analytics. Security analytics is uh, also called as a security camera for your network. So you see security cameras everywhere for physical security in public places, in banks, in malls, and so on and so forth, which is recording all the activity that's going on, and it gives you the ability to play back the tape whenever an incident occurs. Security analytics does exactly the same for your network. It sits inside your network, it's capturing all the network traffic and creating alerts based on threat intelligence it allows you to replay the traffic, it allows you to go back into history and see what happened at a certain point of time. You can rebuild web pages, email messages, instant messages, and so on and so forth to get more content and context around a specific incident. How did it start? Um, did my user receive a phishing email and he or she clicked on that link, went on to another website? You can rebuild that entire story using security analytics. <clears throat> Um, again, 
I know I'm reiterating this point again and again about integrations because this is very, very, very important. Um, security analytics integrates with a whole bunch of best of breed security solutions that we have, be it in the um, log management, security incident event management space, uh, IPS, IDS, malware analysis, and so on and so forth, which allows the incident responder to look at a collaborative view of what is happening, let's say, in the network in, at the endpoint, and gives you that ability to respond accordingly. The next solution I'm going to talk about in this space is what we call as encrypted traffic management. Um, I talked briefly about why SSL traffic needs to be inspected, because it's being misused by um, attackers and malware authors. So we have a solution that allows you to decrypt this traffic and feed this to all the security solutions that can benefit from it. So a lot of the parameter solutions that we have today, we talk about next generation firewalls, IPSs, IDSs, malware, uh, workbenches, and so on, have no visibility to SSL. Some of them have the visibility, but if you enable SSL decryption, then you see a huge performance degradation. So a lot of customers do not enable SSL decryption on those boxes. So what we are proposing is the ability for you to offload the SSL decryption from those devices which have the ability to do, and to give the ability to look into encrypted traffic for the devices that don't have the ability to do so, so you can benefit from this and take a look at what's going on under that SSL wrapper. <clears throat> when you feed this decrypted traffic to security analytics, you can benefit even more. So you can actually see what was traversing in the SSL traffic. Uh, was there malware? Was, was there someone exfiltrating data? Was there any confidential information being exchanged? And so on and so forth. Um, as I said, there are a whole bunch of security solutions that can benefit from it, next generation firewalls, data loss prevention solutions, IDS, IPS, and so on and so forth. Now, when we talk about SSL decryption, it also brings in another point of discussion. Uh, remember I said that the very premise of SSL was to provide data privacy and integrity. Now, when we start looking into this traffic, there will be issues around data privacy. You know, your users might say, hey, why are you looking into my personal banking traffic? You have no business looking into my bank accounts. Or not so prevalent in our part of the world, but in the Western world, healthcare is uh, a big part of data privacy. So why are you looking at my healthcare traffic or any other sort of traffic which the organization should not be looking at? And we give you the ability to selectively decrypt traffic based on categories. So just a tick of the box and say, do not decrypt financial websites. So that gives HR teams, legal teams, the peace of mind that we will not get into data, data privacy issues with our users. The next building block of our incident response methodology is the sandboxing uh, malware analysis platform, which <coughs> excuse me, is a key part of this because you have to have the ability to fingerprint the unknown. Um, Signature-based technologies can give you uh, alerts on known viruses and malware. Um, there is machine learning, artificial intelligence, heuristics, and different other types of technologies that are being built into the semantic solutions, which can give you further insight into what sort of malicious activity is going on. But sandboxing is unique in the sense that it will actually execute the malware and show you the behavior of that malware as if it would have run in your production environment. So looking at that behavior, you will come to know whether this would have infected your production systems or not. And based on that, you can take proactive action to make sure that you know, this malware doesn't get propagated further into your environment.
The next component uh, is what we call as EDR, or Endpoint Detection and Remediation. So going back to my point around integration and working in, in independent silos, uh, if I see an incident on network forensics system and I want to investigate that on the endpoint, how do I do that? I will have to take the evidence, take the IP address, go on to the endpoint, and then start investigating there. We make life easier. We have this integration wherein you can directly pivot into the semantic ATP solution and run, run remediation tasks. So you can delete the malicious file, you can kill the task that it's using, you can kill the processes, you can have the artifacts as evidence and so on and so forth. That makes the life of an incident responder very, very easy. Um, last but not the least building block is our cybersecurity services. Um, we hear a lot from our customers that, hey, you know what, we like your approach, we like the technologies that you're proposing, but we don't have the skills to use and maintain such a technology. And this is where our cybersecurity services can really assist. Not only can they train you on how to use these uh, technologies and best practices, processes, and so on and so forth, but they can also go a step further in terms of providing managed security services wherein we will um, look at all the incidents that are created from this uh, these technologies and alert you and you can accordingly take action. You can also make use of the incident response service from Symantec when, God forward, if you are uh, faced with a breach or an incident, then we can fly down people and then they can do the incident response for you. Um, I know I'm running out of time, but very quickly, I just want to put all of this into perspective. Uh, by talking to you about a live case that I investigated a uh, few years ago. So I was at a customer doing a proof of concept of some of these technologies that I talked about, and there was no suspicion of a breach or anything of that sort. We were just doing a threat assessment, and I noticed that there was an executable file that was downloaded. And when I ran it through some of the threat intelligence systems, I noticed that only eight out of the so many vendors that we have in the antivirus space in VirusTotal were able to recognize that. And even they could not pinpoint as to what virus it was. They were talking about a generic heuristic detection and so on. So as time passed, uh, you know, I noticed that the AV vendor that was being used by that organization did not detect that at all and it took another three months for them to detect it. So the key that I'm trying to, key point that I'm trying to make here is that do not wait always for updates from vendors. If you are seeing something malicious, anomalous, suspicious in your environment, investigate it, take a look at it, reduce the window of exposure, and respond proactively by using these methodologies and technologies. So, we started off talking about the issues that our customers tell us, and we can deliver, as you've just seen, various solutions and the ability to implement these solutions effectively and carry out your incident response process more effectively. So in summary, prevention alone does not scale. You need to start thinking about rapid detection and response. Uh, user awareness obviously is very, very important. We've seen others talk about, you know, your security is only as strong as the weakest link in your organization, so that's very important. And integrations are also very, very important. Um, Semantic obviously provides many other technologies beyond what I've just talked about to help you with your uh, prevention, detection, response, remediation, all sorts of needs in cybersecurity. So, please feel free to engage us and we can come and help you. I want to leave you with this thought. Anyone knows what this means? It's not a matter of if, but when, which basically means that it's not if you will be compromised, it's when you will be compromised. So please be proactive, 
look at rapid detection and response and change your mindset to continuous monitoring rather than reactive monitoring. Thank you very much for being patient.